Hi, I'm Troy McClure. No, I'm not. I mean, I'm Martin Leon Lindstedt, and you might remember some of my alien fanfiction horror short films such as Alien Infestation Part 1. <laughs> alien Infestation Part 2. In these upcoming videos, I'll be showing you how I made these short films. Maybe you'll find the process of independent zero-budget movie making interesting. I might pick up a tip or two. And also make sure to stick around the channel because I have a new upcoming short I'm very excited to show you in the near future. There will be no xenomorph in that one, sorry. But it's still horror. And drama. But mostly horror. So make sure you don't miss it. Just a quick story about me, born 1985, making movies since I was 19, working today at a local production house in the south of Sweden as a Swiss army filmmaker, doing a little bit of everything and creating commercial stuff, but also been doing my own short film projects whenever I feel the need to do something, you know, more creative. The idea. This is my basement in my apartment building. Back in 2014, whenever I went to my basement to do laundry, my imagination went pretty wild. Obviously, I love the Alien franchise, and when walking these tight hallways with all the plumbing and pipes in the ceiling, I thought to myself, it's almost like I'm walking around in the spaceship from the movies. So wheels in my head started to turn, and I thought to myself, wouldn't it be cool to make a horror short about a xenomorph running around and stalking the tents? So just out of curiosity, I went online to see if I could find a free 3D model of this movie monster. It's called a Xenomorph, if you didn't know. And I found one that was pretty decent. I know a couple of you asked where I found it, so links in the in links in the description. Links in the At this point, I had no experience in character animation, so I looked up some tutorials and going to town with rigging. Rigging basically means giving your 3D model bones that will twist and turn your model as you move them. Fun fact, after hours and hours of character rigging, tutorials, googling, and eventually a complete movie, I realized that inside the folder of the downloaded model there was an already rigged character. That's time well spent. So finally I got my character rigged and started testing out what I could do in animation. My first test was just having the creature to crouch and standing up in a slow and creepy manner. So at first I just made my story around this. A girl comes down to do the laundry, spots the monster, it stands up, she gets killed. Amazing story, right? But after working with the animation a couple of days, I realized I probably could do more. I could make it walk, I could make it run. I realized that, yeah, I think I can make this look good if I put some time and effort into it. So slowly over time, this storyline expanded to a much more comprehensive idea, where the main character would actually flee up to her apartment and, spoiler, eventually fight off the xenomorph with fire. By this time, I had already invested too much time into this idea, so I couldn't really walk away from this project now. So without any budget, I decided to make this happen somehow. Production. When the script was finished, I started doing simple previous movies. And I made it with this wooden mannequin. I know, it looks really silly, but it's actually tremendously helpful. Immediately, I can get some footage down on the timeline and try out pacing of the story, you know, music, simple editing, and also plan for my BFX shots. Then I set out to find actors, and I asked Martina Biarre, a professional actress whom I had worked with before on a couple of other short films. And she was up for doing the part of Amanda, my story's protagonist. I really wanted someone with dark hair to just a little bit resemble Ellen Ripley from the movies. The dead boyfriend and one of the Waylon Yutani workers was played by my buddy Martin Svensson, and the other one was played by my dad. And yes, on some days there were two Martins and one Martina on set. Not confusing at all. Principal shooting. I scheduled all the shootings on weekends in March 2015 and basically shot just about one scene every weekend for about two to three months. Uh, one scene per weekend will let me spend a lot of time preparing, collecting uh, whatever props needed, set dressing, you know, lighting tests and uh, so on. 
On some days I had some help on set, for example pushing our camera on a dolly, uh, but mostly it was me and Martina on set. I shot the movie on a Blackmagic 4K cinema camera and mostly had a couple of aperture LED panel lights as my main light kit. If you make a horror movie, you gotta have flickering lights, right? Back in 2015, my light panels didn't have any FX mode like they have these days. So I had to come up with a solution how I can make lights flicker in the basement. So in the past, I had been experimenting with these small microcontrollers. These little electronic boards you could program to do just about whatever. So I built this tiny battery-powered Arduino-controlled LED light held together with duct tape. Don't you just love it? And I wrote a program where I could make it flicker randomly. With these knobs, I could also change brightness and speed of the actual flickering. Post-production. After principal shooting, I had 16 hours of footage to edit and a lot of the effects shots that had to be created. I spent a lot of time refining the model with details like normal maps, bump maps and reflection and getting lights on the model matching the physical ones in the scene. If there was a flick and lightning shot then this had to be animated light in the 3D space. These kind of details can really help sell the effects to really merge the 3D model into the actual scene. So finally, after a lot of post-production, I had a finished movie around May 2016. Just a little bit over a year from where I started the whole project. We held a small premiere here at my place. With friends, with red carpet, and popcorn and drinks and all that jazz. Lessons learned. The most common response I got from people was after they watched the movie was Cool story, bro, but what happens next, man? The short really ends on a cliffhanger with no proper ending, which really bugged me for a long time. But after a couple of months available on YouTube, the views really took off with, without me doing any kind of promotion at all. You all found it by yourself because you're like me, a fan of the Alien franchise. So I just want to say I'm really grateful for all of you who watched it and enjoyed what I created. As a filmmaker, it is extremely valuable to hear someone's true experience of the movie you put your heart and soul into. After a couple of years of that nagging feeling of not properly ending the story, I finally found the inspiration and motivation to make a second part to end the storyline properly. And how I made that one, that's for another day. So thanks for watching and if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. My goal here is to become more active on this channel and I hope you would like to join me in this journey forward. So I will see you in the next one. Bye! Han <laughs>